Okay, um, we'll make a start. If you can just go on mute, that's okay, just to stop any background noise. Um, and I'll try not to at my end. My, phone, my house phone's just rang, it never rings. It's, uh, that's just typical. But uh, lovely to see you all here today. Uh, welcome everybody. If I just introduce myself first, uh, for those who haven't met me, my name's Linda. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of um, Solucity Foundation, a charity who helps look after people, give them support and education in fatigue management. Um, and that now links into people who are affected by long COVID. And today we have our guest, Mandy, um, who we are delighted to have here today because she's been through a horrendous journey and still is affected by long COVID. Um, and she's kindly given her time today to share her, her personal journey and how that's impacted on her life and the, the things that she's doing to help support her, her health and, and to improve her health and well-being. So thank you, Mandy, for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you, Linda, for letting me have this opportunity. It's, it's huge. So thank you very much. Oh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. So um, today we are going to talk about long COVID um, and what that means and how we can help support people and all about Mandy's journey. Um, so Mandy, what does long COVID mean to you? Well, um, long COVID, obviously the word just doesn't seem to particularly, you know, anything at all. And, but it's so, so complex and it's so not one thing. Um, everybody is completely different. Um, and that's, that's the hard thing about long COVID, isn't it? It's it'll, whatever name it, long caller, you know, post viral syndrome, whatever COVID post viral syndrome. It, it, nobody has any answers. And I think this is the problem because when people don't have a, you know a complete answer to things then that's where confusion can you know bring lots of from every area of society um and i think just the you know where we've been with the whole covid situation you know it's not been a very you know fantastic year or two years now isn't it nearly for for everybody um so this long covid has come along and it's just an add-on it seems to to all the other misery but it, if anybody's suffering from it it's a lonely place in in my experience anyway so yeah a little bit like um you know all the people that i've met and we work with it's very very similar to chronic fatigue syndrome mm -hmm. and any yeah. fatigue related conditions it's that silent condition you can't see it if you haven't been through it you can't feel it you can't understand it and and why would you if you've not been through that that lived experience so it's really hard to get that across to people health professionals in particular um because we all present different types of symptoms as well at different times yeah absolutely what was your life like before what you know how did you live your life and your well i've always been a very very active person a very independent person um very much into my my health. I've been a personal trainer for 30 years. I've worked abroad, I've worked in the UK. Um, I'm an occupational therapist. Um, uh, my life was always about, you know, helping people. I, mean, I know it sounds a bit like crass and a bit like, oh, but it's true. I, I never really thought it's, uh, you know, I just ran around on my tiptoes and gear six all the time. So um, yeah, it wasn't about me, it was about, you know what my role was what I, how I felt good in in my life was you know if I could help people so um and this is a bit of a different situation because um you know the person that I and I still am I haven't gone away I'm still that person but it's my body's not allowing me to do what I would normally just not even think about you know now I just even breathing is something I have to think about, you know. So, yeah, it's been a massive, massive change at the moment. I'm not, you know, but you got to keep that positive. You've got to keep thinking that this won't be forever. That's what I've been trying to do, you know, just keep moving forward and keep learning and keep trying to, you know, the, 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 the things will get better. That's what I've been trying to do anyway, so which yeah. is so positive and so key. And I, I've met you a few times now, Mandy, and you are a very inspiring person. 
you know, what we, we're just about to go into the impact long COVID has had and COVID on, on your, your body and your mind and your life. Mm. But you are always so positive and you just keep going and keep going. And, you know, life before you, you were always the people pleaser, giving out all the time, wanted to help people. And again, it, putting yourself to the bottom of the pile. And, and now this is your time to put yourself to the top of the pile and to get yourself well. So, um, you know, you, you are a very inspirational person because you always remain so positive. So um, can you talk us through what happened, you know, where, where from, from the beginning, really, from when you contracted um, COVID to what was the impact on your well-being and what happened in your life? I think, I think you know, when, when, it, when, it first, when I first started getting poorly, um, I, I, where, where I would have got it, I don't know. I, 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 you know, worked, so it could have been at work, it could have been, you know, nobody, nobody really knows. But it's just, I got poorly and um, I was always very careful. Um, I was always, um, you know, aware from the beginning, actually, even from right before the beginning, I was aware, but um, of, 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 of what viruses can do, because that's my, you know, what I do, my profession. But um, so, yeah, so I did, I, you know, got the, I didn't know it was the virus. I just thought it was a chest infection. I got some antibiotics to begin with. And then um, after um, eight days, I mean, before then I was, I'd lost, I remember I've lost my taste and smell from day one, you know, um, and that still hasn't really come back. I get glimpses now and again. I also get things like nail polish smell, which is just awful. Um, um, so, but that was from the beginning. Also my left arm um, became very painful, very, very weak. Um, again, I'm just like, oh, just I'm a bit, I don't know. I just didn't think that I was so, because I'm always so active and so you know if, if I, I don't get ill really you know and so um and if I do get a little I don't even get colds I mean on the whole like I've always got my vitamins and you know that kind of stuff so anyway I thought well uh, you know maybe it's a chest infection and I got the antibiotics it didn't do a thing and then it just steadily was getting worse and um the doctor then said you should get an oxo I can't even pronounce the word the oxo oximeter that's it um and I thought oh it's a bit scary you know so but I got one not again not thinking but then I thought well maybe you know oh my goodness this might be covid and at that time in October I don't know people were getting poorly and everything else but um you know it's just always it's always thinks it's somebody else don't you you know it's just like it can't happen to me and but um I did, I, I did have, but again, it wasn't diagnosed because by eight days, it was too late for the, the time to have a PCR test when I rang up. So um, I had no prognosis at that point, but then um, I sort of continued, it got worse. Um, my oxygen levels were dropping, not because I was looking at the oximeter. I didn't really want to look at that really because I wanted to hear what my body's telling me. And literally, I'd be walking just to, the, to go to the toilet upstairs, and it's like a marathon. And my brain was active. I was, you know, wanted to do stuff, but my brain, my body was just not playing game. And, and so when I do that, and my heart rate would go massively high, and the feelings that brings on, and oxygen levels drop, anyway, blah, blah, blah. So I'd have to just lie down and just do nothing when I didn't want to, you know. Um, and... I couldn't walk quick and to this day I can't walk quick you know so things like that is and that is like really frustrating for you Mandy when when your your brain won't you know it's saying do it but then your body can't um because then frustration sets in you start to get angry and and I remember those days when I back you know years ago when I had chronic fatigue syndrome it's the same my brain was saying, you know, you can do this. My body just, just couldn't do it. Um, it, it it's that mixed match because you've got this, it's almost like you've got a fight going on in your head, haven't you? You, you want to do it, but then you can't do it. Mm. Um, so I understand that as well. Mm. So. And I think that that's the thing. It's like, again, I just thought it's a process. So even though it was frustrating, I kind of like, well, okay, it's not going to be forever. It is a process. We just have to listen to your body and just, you know you can't do it that's it 
so you know you can't do anything when your heart's going mad and so I used to go to the garden like really slowly and get some vitamin D every day and just stand there and then I have to walk back and that's a massive journey for me <laughs> so you know but I'm like it's just a process we're just going to get through this and that was you know two weeks three weeks four weeks um it got really bad sometimes you know and an ambulance was called out um not me but the one on one did so you know um but I didn't go to hospital until a month later actually just because I wasn't getting well so I had a blood test but to go to the hospital the blood test and then they kept me in um because of obviously what I was like um and did some tests and things and but I just didn't want to be there you know it's not the it was I've been so I've been trying to do this myself for the last month so um I need I felt I needed oxygen then but I've only recently only got some oxygen in, in August so um I've my I think my body adapted to not having the right amount of oxygen so I've had to do a lot of stuff by myself because you know a lot of the time you'd ring up and it'd be like well there's nothing we can do you just have to look on the website NHS website and I think that's the thing that it was just that lack of nobody knew the answers I'm not saying that but I think when it comes to that that curtain thing of oh it's just anxiety with these people that have had this is that is very very um well, I don't know what the word is really, but um, of course people are going to be anxious to a degree, but this isn't about anxiety, what in the what the word is meaning. This is something that's taken over people's bodies. Um, and so not being heard, I think for me, is a huge thing out of all of this. Not only from, you know, and I'm not blaming anybody, this isn't to here to blame people. Um, this is just to maybe for from this to, to be to be able to learn from it in future and this is not for just long COVID this is for all the other conditions you know chronic fatigue syndrome ME fibromyalgia we'll go on and go on you know all the conditions that the medical fraternity just don't fully understand and they can't give categorical answers because these conditions are uniquely about that person it's their bodies it's unique to that person so they're all going to be slightly different anyway and everybody's got a different life experience everybody's had different traumas you know everybody's got a different blood type and 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 this is where we need to see things in going forward in the future is a holistic thing not linear you know we've had that's that's kind of moved on a bit now we need to see things more in a, a very multi multi-complex yeah situation that this is especially and we hear this time and time again over the years of working with people with chronic fatigue in, in the in the foundation that people aren't heard mm. and i think you've you've just touched on that in, in a big way that um it's so important to be heard and yeah I've been heard and somebody understands more about what what you're going through that takes off a lot of pressure um yeah, that mm. feeling of being isolated and alone and on your own um and i think that's a really key point is people should be allowed to be express themselves to talk openly about what's going on and for somebody to be more understanding yeah um, and, and i get that because i went through that as well um, yeah. taking a few years to have a diagnosis then you get a diagnosis of, of chronic fatigue and all well, the stuff we can do for you and you know we don't know what to really do with you and it's the same with long COVID because this is all very new again uh, and and people don't quite know how to work with fatigue whereas um behind the scenes at um our charity we've all had lived experiences of fatigue so yeah. so think into people like we did with you mandy straight away you know you are you are heard we do listen to you we do understand you uh, because we've been through that lived experience and it's almost like it's that whole weight off your shoulders that you've been carrying around for, uh, for quite some time of mm -hmm. oh, somebody understands yeah. and if that's then linking into the support services that there's other people that are sharing those experiences and they understand too and it's that offering that peer support which is just so important while you're through um recovery yeah I, I i mean that unless you're in this situation isn't it Lindy? you don't quite understand the importance to to that the peer support the the being heard 
yeah. how much that impacts on your, your your healing and your you know to, to yeah. move forward it, it is a massive part of all of this definitely yeah and this you know but having you know Salute it's, it's just you know it, it's just that that bouncy cushion I suppose it's just you've got that's wow my god there's other people and then because I don't know anybody that's got this you know there's nobody I know in, in, in you know that, that's got long COVID that's in my you know friendship base and it's just or well, anybody really and and so it has been a lonely place because although you try to explain and it's not nobody's fault but they just they can't understand you know it's not um it's just especially something this is like this especially as well because it's so new as, as well but um but having just this community where where other people have had past either gone through this or still going through this it just makes you feel like you you know you're not something wrong as in you're going mad it's just that you've you know you this is a, a process and and so now hopefully you know with all the different things around it will be um my brain's going as you can tell <laughs> I'm going oh, back. <laughs> we all understand that brain fog and what yeah, my blah, 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 blah. And where am I going because our brains are thinking over and over again so it's just taking that step back mm. breath and it's fine and that that leads us on to the impact it has on um you know your family your friends your mm. you know um being an occupational therapist it, mm. it it impacts on the whole part of your life it's not just about you as well no and it it, it does shatter people's lives because it's that lack of understanding and or, you know, just have, don't have a good night's sleep. You'll you'll be fine. You'll feel okay tomorrow. It's more than that. Um, and long COVID, you know, it's it's impacting on the body with with your breathing difficulties and numerous other multiple symptoms that are coming out of this. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and, and I think that's the thing. It's just because it is with this particular. It's so mild. I mean, I couldn't speak properly for 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 months, really. Well, week, week, weeks, and then months. It was. A bit, I mean, to, even now, it's it's it, it's straining when I talk. If it makes sense, um, and I do these exercises now. It's like oh, and all these because it, it it helps me, you know. And I have to bend over still and all sorts of stuff just to get air and, um, yeah. and so it, you know it's affected everything. But I think, like you say, it's it how it impacts my you know the family because when I'm the person who's independent and this and this and this and does everything and suddenly that was a kind of hard transition that I can't do that and you're gonna actually have to do that or I can't do you know so that that's been really really tough because I want to do it but I, I, I actually literally can't so um and then I think the misunderstanding I think there's definitely been misunderstanding from especially with the moment how it is because you don't see people or hadn't because of you know the whole lockdown thing so people didn't see you um, it was all just on a text or this or that. And so then again, that hugely caused misunderstanding um, and all the other stuff that's out there in social media about this and that, all the different, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, and so, you know, people have set opinions um, about something which they haven't even seen a person, never mind spoken to them, but the judgment and the, the, the kind of like, ridicule on on that i i i don't i way over my head i don't get that at all to people that i know that's what i'm saying this is people i know uh, who to this day have not spoken to me you know that's really that's really yeah. hard for you mandy because it yeah people yeah. close to you that you think are close um yeah. and you're not receiving the compassion and the understanding mm. that's really yeah. i think we we all learn through those experiences again and, and it's quite often when you are rock bottom we all find out who are our oh yes yeah real friends and it, it's it's a, a difficult one to swallow but i think that happens in life doesn't it with with lots of trauma yeah. that, you know we all experience through life experiences um but it's about as you do it's focusing on who you have got in your life who does understand who is positive. Absolutely who can support you and we're all the type of people that because we are the people pleasers and the yes people and we'll do everything for everybody else mm. we have to ask for help we find that really hard really hard yeah yeah really used to doing everything for everybody else so it's mm. that acceptance um and that's you know it's easy to say 
but it's a hard one to to mm. actually go through that process and uh, adopt that belief that uh, I accept where I am. This is happening. Um, and life is changing and is going to change again. But the areas that work for me were then is actually I'm going to go into a better life than I had before, a happier life and more fulfilling absolutely yeah and I think when I've met you Mandy I think that's the same for you yeah yeah I mean this is things happen in life you know we all, all I mean you know I, I'm lucky because I'm alive and you know people have had much much worse situations and, and you know things have happened uh, for all sorts of reasons so you know I, I'm here and I can walk and you know so it's, I'm not moaning I'm not doing this because I'm, I'm moaning about me oh my, it's not about that if I can just have a little bit of like um just just so people don't feel that they're by themselves really and that i i completely get that um because life is so short and you know if people are suffering well you know just accept that they're suffering and don't sort of try and fix them it's not about fixing people it's about listening to what they've got to say and and hearing what they've got to say and just showing compassion and some empathy and that's it nothing more really no, sometimes yeah. you can't fix everything and, and you don't have to, but the, for healing, or for me anyway, you know, just that, that lack of, not obviously everybody, but there are, you know, a few situations. And I just think that I just see, have felt it. So I, I could feel it. I really understand the importance of that now of, of, of and I have before, but, you know, more so um, to be, to, to have that, um, been heard etc I'm, I'm going on about it. i'm going on that one again. No, that's no because ah. people relate to this and and it, yeah. it, it's about giving other people hope and inspiring and yeah your 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 journey and, that, and that's a huge ask of you to do that and, and, and you know we we're, again we're so thankful because it takes a big thing to share share your journey um you know it's very personal it's very private um but i know you're doing this to help other people to say you're not on your own you know I'm I'm going through this and that this is what I've been through um and it's yeah. about coming together and, and supporting one another yeah and I, I would never want to think that because I like you said Linda, I'm somebody that would not normally go and you know ask for help etc cetera, etc cetera, because I, I just I just hid away for the first few weeks months really I didn't you know I I actually did carry on working but I couldn't work full-time um but um, nobody knew, you know, I just sort of carried on, um, but gasping for air at the same time type of thing, you know. Um, well, and, you're trying to hold it together, aren't you? You're trying to... Yeah, but the, in fact, that's together. probably not the best because then I'm not rest. you know, you're not rest. This is where it's so important to listen to the body um, and really listen, not, not kind of like, oh, we've got to carry on and, you know, you'll be better because that's obviously a lot of people would say that, oh, come on, just go for a walk, go and get some fresh air, do this, do this which is absolutely fine. I would normally, normally always say that, obviously, and eat healthily and, and everything else. But um, but with this, it's a little bit different. You do need to, to rest. Rest is so key. Obviously, with very, very good nutrition, um, pacing, etc. So, yeah. But that leads me on to what, what, what are you doing, Mandy, to keep yourself, you know, the best uh, top health you possibly can while, while you're going through this? this journey of long COVID, um, well, what, what do you do? Have... what's your, any secrets you can share with anybody? Well, um, I personally, you know, everybody's different, but I've always been healthy, whatever, but I've really gone really kind of to the point. I can't touch, for example, alcohol at all. It really reacts with me. My lungs go really tight and I can't like breathe properly. Um, um, so certain foods do kind of react um, to me now. Um, and actually saying that I do get it's weird when I do have anything bad for me I get a nail polish smell so I, I say that I'm like a sniffer dog now <laughs> my body's telling me it's quite cute really it's telling me no that's bad for you you can't have that um, amazing. amazing how so, the body works amazing, amazing how the body protects us exactly and it's, I feel like I'm, I feel like oh bless it it's trying to protect me here you know so I've yeah. got to listen to it you know so um but uh yeah well definitely obviously the vitamin c the vitamin d a, a, a good multivitamin for me a, a, a b complex vitamin a quercetin magnesium um oh good probiotics a good you know get some good bacteria in your, in your gut um 
in the, you know in the morning for definite um and yeah just um i have my ashwanda tea and things like that yeah, um, you but, are you're, do, you're doing a lot you're doing a lot with your nutrition supplementation which again we we recommend um that uh if you're going to take that route then uh, work with a health practitioner yeah absolutely go i mean not everybody's would, would you know if it is different there's all these other ones as well that i, I take as well which um okay. a couple of others but they you know they, they're all they're all kind of like for everybody's got different things going on with them anyway but that's just the general thing i do like just for the body just the general basics um and and i, I say that the, just the food and just and just listen to what your food's what you what you need in the day and try not to go for too long without food some people might listen you know all sorts of different ways of doing stuff and that's that's fine it's i'm not here to say anything different so um but i just think it's as natural as possible definitely hydration with water as much as you know that's really key i take coconut water as well for electrolytes and things um but not big meals either so it's, again it's like not having too much for the body to deal with like not too much stress not too much food in one go not too much lack of sleep for example sleep is really important to get a, a routine with the sleep even though it's hard when you wake up maybe i do you know gasping for air etc um but it's really important to keep that routine um and 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 again the whole internet side of things and the the phones and, and all that everything in moderation and getting out in the fresh air and the you know the sunshine and and you know even if you can't walk far just to get out in the fresh air you know it's just all it's, really part of it isn't it yeah. yeah our bodies love movement as well um i think yeah. it, it's as you say it's that it's small steps it's being gently gently mentally and physically our bodies are under massive stress Massive, yeah. Uh, taking the pressure off and allowing our bodies to naturally heal. Yeah. Uh, is are here to protect us. That if we connect, I always say, keep connecting into yourself all every day. In it, you know, not in a pressured way, but how am I feeling? What, what's going on mentally and physically? Yeah. And our our bodies here are are here to protect us, and basically, it is screaming out for rest. And it's hard when mentally we're saying we want to do this, this and this, and we won't allow. So, but it really is saying rest, rest, rest. And I hear time and time again, well, I have rested of people. Oh, okay, you might be putting your feet up, you might be lying down and having a, you know, a, a light, you lie down on your bed in the afternoon. Um, but what's happening with your mind? And that's something that I learned. I thought, oh, I put my feet up today for a, for a couple of hours, and but I hadn't rested. What was going on up here? My yeah. mind was still going a million miles an hour, and it yeah. wasn't until I'd worked on that bit, on the mental health bit, and you know, switching into positive all the time. What what have I got in my life that's good? Forget the negative. You know, that doesn't serve us. Forget what's happened in the past. Forget what's happening in the future bring yourself back to the here and, and, and I know you live your life like that Mandy too don't you yeah very much so very much so because I'd say I mean I'm not saying all the time because at the beginning it's like you know your mind's going oh my goodness oh my goodness and now over time it's you know I've kind of recognized things a lot more and and accepted it I think is the word because you know it can be quite a frightening place when you can't breathe for example um you know and so there's things with breathing exercises now. There's a lot more research coming out anyway. But it, even before that, I was doing my own breathing and and I, and I did tapping and tapping solutions and things like that. And so it didn't get make it go away. And that's where you, that that can be where it's a bit scary because you're trying all these things, all this nutrition and this and this and all these things. That are really, and it absolutely, you know, it's still worth doing because it can take the edge off and it can help even if it's a minute amount it doesn't matter so it helps that's a positive isn't it and then longer term you know you just got to think it will get it's a time thing and it will improve in time um but like you say yeah the the, the mindset is key because again the guilt you know the guilt of not doing stuff is is huge when you've been such an independent person you know and um and then, it, then it, yeah well, that's a huge energy and then that energy is also 
it's used to line, I know it's myself, having to sort of in effect defend myself and 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 prove why and why can't it. And it's just like, you know, you shouldn't have to do that. People can clearly see that you wouldn't not be doing stuff. If you could, you would, you know. So that that I think can be, you know, quite um having to keep say that you know why this and why that it's just well this is how it is and but that's education isn't it, i suppose it's like longer term moving forward i hope people hopefully people will start to be a bit more educated in all of these different conditions um not just people who've got the condition but people around them as well hopefully as you were saying um because i was always bothered about what people thought about me and what people say and i have a saying now what what people say or think about anything is none of my business yeah i true. i focus on on me and, and that was part of me in that separation part in, in in a nice way um but it was none of my business because i was affected by well people like me you know it's that people please the thing you know inspiring for people to like you because we we're here to a natural instinct in us is we want to survive we, we want to be liked we want to be loved don't we that's part yeah. of that's why we're here and that's a natural instinct within us so and that takes us into actually loving ourselves mm -hmm. we can learn to love ourselves um and i think when anyone's been through a real chronic condition you disconnect from yourself you don't like yourself um yeah. And, and I think that's a coping mechanism. So it's about actually nurturing and loving who, who you are and it, and it starts with you. Um, and that's another big step to take. And I think, again, that, that's what we work with in, in the charity in Salus. Mm. And, and I think that's e so easy said and done, isn't it, Linda? Like, oh, just look after yourself, nurture yourself. It sounds great. And it's just like, it's that, that's the biggest step, I think. It's just that, actually doing it and actually spending a certain amount of time just make it happen um yeah. one way or other um and keeping to it yeah. for every single day yeah because there's always all those other things to do isn't there there's always like well actually oh, I'll, I'll do that yeah. in there i've got to do this i've got to do that yeah and it's about giving yourself that time so that kind of links us into how has Salu supported you? What, what's worked for you or the bits that haven't worked for you? Um, because again, that will help other people uh, to uh, tap into our services. And, you know, they, they are free, apart from we, we have an online hub that um, is a donation subscription that goes back into the charity, but everything else is free that we do. What, what really works for you? I think, I mean, overall, having just Salu as a place, to have this information and, and knowing that there's people around in, in, in this group that are, are understanding and get get me, you know, that that in itself was huge. But then on top of that, you actually then have the nutrition, you know, you have the Pilates, you have all the different things going on, which has been just huge because you can dip in and dip out and, you know, there's no expectations, there's no having to, you know, go to a class or do this or do that. It just saves that the energy it's just about energy saving isn't it and that's what this this, this whole charity has done it's just created that help without having to use expend all your energy to organize it if that makes yeah. sense yeah. yeah it does and and also you can be you you don't you know you're with other people um yeah. we're all online at the moment um but again even online we're sharing those experiences but you don't have to come and pretend you're something else or pretend you're okay you can be who you want to be because we like to yeah. understand. Yeah. And actually, you don't want to speak. You don't have to in, in some of our support groups. You can just listen. You don't have to have a camera on. Yeah. Um, you know, you can come in your PJs. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't you, matter. No. If, if you don't want to break teeth, you don't have to. You can just be who you want to be. And that is so important because it takes the pressure off. Yeah. yeah. Because if you think about it, just having a shower. I know for me, for example, I have had a shower, maybe, you know, but my, <laughs> I haven't had a shower. But just to have a shower, it is, you know, it's a big event, you know. Um, so, you know, that's a great, that might be one thing you do in the day. That's absolutely fine, you know, because it's just, a, that is your body, what it needs on that day. You know, there's, there's no expectation. And that, that, that's a lovely place. That's a lovely thing to have a, a community where everybody gets up as well. Yeah. 
I think like our, our closed Facebook page is a really good platform again where you know you as you say you can dip in and out you can see posts and you don't have to respond but it's knowing that there's other people that are going through your experience or if you're having a bad day somebody quite often puts a post up there and just says I'm feeling this or has anyone been through this experience you know and other people share their their experiences and again it's it's you're not alone with this you've got that support and then when you want to come into some of the education sessions that are uh, run by our team of health practitioners again that they're, they're, they're in modules so it could be on hydration one week it could be on healthy snacks it could be on um, keeping yourself in a, a positive mental state you know mm-hmm. You, you get your challenges and you get your down days and you think oh you know everything that hurts I can't breathe all my joints hurt I can't keep doing this those, those are the tough days mm. but learning strategies and techniques which is what we give you mm. are little things you can tap into that make a big difference yeah that before even like you know if I'm if I'm going out and just stepping out the door and doing a gentle walk it may just be, you know, two minutes. Am I doing myself harm or am I okay to do that? It's, it's little things like that of how far do you, should you be pushing yourself or shouldn't you, which comes in just pacing management. Exactly. Yeah, pacing. One of the hardest things to do. Um, it's just so hard, yeah. isn't it, pacing? It is, yeah. And, and that's the thing, it, but it's so, so important. Not the grading, it's, it's a pacing and... And, and adapting each day, like you say, every day is different for whatever reason. You might have done something a little bit too much the day before or whatever, and then it might affect you. That You know, it's just, a, it's just that battery, isn't it? You've got this battery life, how I see it now, and it's just you've only got a certain amount. You haven't got the full capacity at the moment. And, and it's just, well, you've got that little bit of battery, so you have to conserve it a little bit. And um, that's what pacing is really, isn't it? And just think... You've got- so you, you, key points are pacing, stress management, sleep, you mentioned it's really important. Nutrition. Yeah. Um, we all know viruses just love sugars and carbohydrates. They just, oh, yeah, absolutely. They yeah. just thrive off them. Not good for me because I am officially a chocoholic still. Try mm. to get off it, but, you know, I have to, well, already have my little fix then. Probably have one later on. Mm. And, but uh, viruses do love sugar and carbohydrates so it's it's reducing that that load yeah and, um, we're looking at mental health positive um state of mind mm-hmm. and our general well-being with movement um you know whether it's you know restorative yoga movement stretch a gentle walk just even getting outside uh, even in the winter i used to wrap up warm and i used to get outside and just Absolutely. sit Mm-hmm. Um, and asking for help ask people for help that's another big thing I've picked up off you today um, is there a uh, a quote or a mantra you use or something that you could share with people today that may help them yeah I mean it's really simple because I can't think of like complex things because I you know I just keep it really simple and that is every step every small and it is small step is progress so you know you don't look into the top of the mountain because you're not there yet it's just a little tiny weeny steps maybe molecule steps doesn't matter that's a positive because those little molecule little steps are going towards getting to the top of the mountain again yeah really really. (laughs) and if there's one thing if i could ask you what's the one thing you would say to people to maybe change today the way they made that one change or over the weekend, what what would that one thing be? I mean, I know there's lots, and we've discussed lots, but what's that one key thing that comes to your mind? Well, it's, it's a couple, but anyway, but I <laughs> think I think a one. Okay, I think <laughs> the, the the key is to. I know it sounds a bit crash and a bit whatever the word is, but it's it's true. It's about please love yourself that is key because you've got to start to love it, and and I see my that's a bit weird but I still want to see my body now as a little little child and I know it's all this inner child thing whatever and that's fine and, and I but this is what how I see it. I see that my body is having to kind of like it's like learning how to I can walk but it's everything's from the beginning again and so I see that of what in the context of a child having to learn stuff again like you know the breathing 
the the eating and my breathing, the 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 walking so I can go faster, the, so that I can ultimately dance all night long like I used to do, you know, which I love, you know. Um, I used to run, I used to do Nordic walking, all these things. But right now I'm back at you know primary school level inside. <laughs> I've got a or even before that really. Um, so I'm still kind of having to, but I took my time to to realize this. Um, and now I do, and now I'm like, well, would I make that child do this and this and this? When the, it's like saying, oh, but I'm this, I'm that. It's telling me, the body's telling me. I'd, I'd listen to it. I'd listen to that child and I'd nurture that child so that they feel that they can deal with that or, or they can get to the next step. It's all progress. It's all slow progress. And that's how I'm seeing this now within me. Thank you. That, yeah, that loving yourself. And love yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's, you deserve it. Yeah, yeah, they deserve it. Yeah. I deserve, thank you, Mandy. I, I, from the bottom of my heart, um, I can't thank you enough for today and sharing, you know, it's so something so personal to you and so close to you. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are so inspirational. You've had such a tough time. You've you've, you've talked about little parts of it but it's it's you know I I've met you a few times now and I know so much more about you um and you just tipped on little, little tiny bits um but you just keep going you go through real tough times and you keep going and I know you yeah. this today to help uh inspire and support and help other people so that's a huge place of kindness again so um we're sharing the love and the compassion so Thank you again, um, and we wish you all the best for your future because you are going to go far and you are going to get through this because uh, you are amazing. You are incredible. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Linda. I'm going to cry, but yeah, no, thank you so, so, so. Much. I, and I, I again, I know, but I really, really mean this because you, you know you've you've you come into my life at a time when you know everything else was kind of like whoa what's going on and you've come in there like this this <laughs> shining light but it is it has if i can do anything to 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 you know to return um what you've 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 set this up and everything else and it's, it's huge so um i really honestly thank you for for your support i really mean that a lot thank you